This is Tall Tale TV, your podcast for sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Panacea by Roger Lay One of the things Mary liked best about the ancient Suffolk town of Halesworth was the thoroughfare, with its shops, cafes, and the well-run library at one end. There was a solicitor's practice, a health center, and even a dental surgery. Since she'd retired from the Royal Air Force and moved to a bungalow on the outskirts of town, she went there practically every day. The first in a new range of beauty products, read the sign in the chemist. Dr. Riley's Natural Luxury Anti-Aging Bath and Hand Soap. Mary decided to give it a try, and over the next week, she was shocked to find out that it really worked. Fine lines disappeared quite quickly from around her eyes, and by the time she'd finished the bar a couple of weeks later, she'd lost 30 years. The face that looked back at her from the bathroom mirror was that of a 25-year-old. So she went back to the chemist to buy some more. I'm afraid we're out of stock at the moment, madam. It's a marketing trial, restricted to this area, the assistant said. Dr. Riley's soap has been ever so popular. Over the next two weeks, Mary's skin began to return to its original middle-aged state. But a month later, the soap was back in stock. When Mary arrived, she found there was a queue and a notice on the counter that read, one bar per customer. There were more women than men waiting in line, but the soap was obviously of interest to both sexes. When Mary finally secured her prize, she took it straight back home and ran a bath. The weeks passed, and as she visited the shops on the thoroughfare, Mary began to notice that many of the townspeople were looking noticeably more youthful. When the new line... Dr. Riley's Fat Burner Weight Loss Tablets went on sale, the chemist was practically overrun. Summer came, and people started wearing their shorts and tees. Mary smiled to herself. The shopping center's youthful-looking population wouldn't look out of place on a university campus. In September, the next item in the range appeared. Dr. Riley's Repair, Protect, and Regrow Tooth Serum. And soon after, Dr. Riley's Dermatological Hair Loss Shampoo. Dr. Riley's Circulation Booster to Control Blood Pressure, Sugar Levels, and Repair the Blood Vessels followed. And then, most popular of all, Dr. Riley's Libido Enhancing Supplement for both men and women. By the time October came, everybody had a spring in their step and a sparkle in their eye. Apart from the few diehards Mary saw going into the health center. She noticed that the dental surgery had a for sale sign outside. It was towards the end of December that the behavioral problems began to manifest themselves. Mary noticed that people seemed to have developed very short fuses and lost their tempers at the slightest thing. She witnessed several fights on the thoroughfare, and heard some loud arguments in shops as she walked past. She had a flaming row herself, in the library of all places, over a book she'd reserved. There were numerous arrests, and on local television, a police spokesperson blamed this unfortunate turn of events on the increased consumption of alcohol during the Christmas and New Year holidays. But things were no better after the holidays, and at the end of January, the Health Center Management Committee called a team of government scientists to investigate. They quickly decided that the culprit was probably Dr. Riley's fat burner tablets. Apparently, People were eating too much and keeping their weight down by exceeding the recommended dose. The Dr. Riley Company canceled the marketing trial and withdrew the whole range pending further investigation. Over the following weeks, Mary and the rest of the townsfolk began to return to their original appearances. 
there were those that had managed to stockpile a few weeks' supply. But by the time February came, wrinkles were reappearing, people's body weights were rising, and male pattern baldness was reasserting itself. Mary tried to avoid mirrors, convinced that she looked older than she had before she started using Dr. Riley's preparations. There were community meetings at the drill hall. There were protests outside the council offices. The chemist was broken into and the pharmacy ransacked. But it was all to no avail. Dr. Riley's beauty products were no longer available. Now, people moved slowly and quietly as they shopped on the thoroughfare. The winter was hard, and much was concealed under coats, hats, and scarves. The atmosphere was a far cry from that of the carefree days of summer. The suicides began in March. But in April, fortunately, a new product became available at the chemist. Dr. Riley's Anxiety, Depression, and Sleep Disorder Remedy. It proved very popular. Panacea is one of the stories in Roger Lay's speculative fiction collection, Dead People on Facebook, which has recently been republished with ten new stories in it. Roger also recently released a brand new techno-thriller novella called The Muslim Prince, now available on Amazon Kindle. It's an alternative history that hinges on futuristic surveillance techniques and what might have happened if Princess Diana hadn't died. Also, be sure to check out his brand new book, The Steampunk Adventures of Harry Lampeter. It's an adventure in a post-apocalyptic steampunk future version of our own world. Links in the description. The thing I loved about this story is that it so closely mimics what's actually going on in the longevity industry. If you haven't heard of that, basically, people are trying to solve aging. Not just slow it down or make it look like you're younger than you are, but actually reverse the clock. And what a lot of people are doing is, as they're finding different things with their research, they're turning it into beauty products. It seems... More people are worried about the way that their face looks than the way that their organs work. <laughs> Vanity is definitely where the money's at, so I guess I can't blame them. And if it farthers the research so that they can do bigger and better things later on, more power to them. For those of you that have been hanging around here for a while, you definitely recognize Roger Lay by this point. He's got more short stories on this channel than anyone else. So, I'll definitely leave a link down in the description to where you can find all of his amazing works. And if you did like this story, make sure to leave a thumbs up or a comment if you're on YouTube or Facebook. And be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next Tall Tale. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.